Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, when I say I'm passionate about putting where you live on the map and share stories about how tech is transforming your town, your city, country, or even continent, I genuinely mean it. And that's a message that I broadcast or try to every single day onto this podcast. And thankfully, some of you out there contact me and take me up on that offer. And for that reason alone, I'm incredibly excited to be talking to Seem Sikut, who is in charge of the digital government and society, as well as the telecommunications and post areas in Estonia. And Seem is also responsible in setting the strategy and policies to launch and steer strategic development initiatives and regulation in the country. But he represents the government in the EU and other international organisations and he's known for commenting and collaborating on policies concerning technology and digital adoption. From online banking to e-school and digital prescriptions, most everyday tasks are carried out digitally in Estonia. And I think much of this highlights how the country is embracing its its moniker of e-Estonia. But the country's digital revolution has also fostered a business environment that boasts the highest number of unicorns in the whole of Europe. In fact, there are 7.4 startups per 10,000 inhabitants in Estonia, and there is a large number of unicorns there, and all of which I think is a manifestation of Estonia's innovation-driven society that's now attracting venture capitalists from around the globe, looking for that next big tech unicorn, and essentially trying to follow in the footsteps of Estonian companies with valuations exceeding 1 billion. We've got so much to talk about today, so buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Estonia so we can speak with Seem right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? So hi, everyone. My name is Seem, and I am the government CIO or Chief Information Officer for Republic of Estonia. So with our team here, we basically have the hard job of, you know, making the most of digital in our government. So uh, steering how our government yeah, uses technology the best. And as someone in charge of the digital government and society, as well as telecommunications in and post areas throughout Estonia, I've got to ask, what is it you love and what excites you about your job? Well, two things to point out. I think, first of all, well, the area itself, you know, changes daily and it's a cliche, but uh, but it really is like that. So, I mean, there's always the next stuff that's coming and, you know, that you can get excited about, you can experiment with and so forth. And literally every day you uh, learn something uh, technology-wise or otherwise. But secondly, it's exciting to be in this business in Estonia, of course, because uh, we have been uh, going digital for the last 20 plus years and there's a lot of you know, eagerness and excitement to try things out. So that keeps us going. And of course, Estonia invented Skype. So nobody listening should be surprised by just how vibrant your tech community is out there. But can you tell me a little bit more about how Estonia actually became a digital society? There's, um, to cut this long story short, I think there's a few things to point out. Well, first of all, I mean, we really um, were lucky and inherited a good sort of strong academic excellence in from the early days of computer science and uh, even from you know the soviet times so that's really what the, the foundations for skype and other things were back in in late in 90s already but secondly actually for us it's a necessity so um being that small as we are 1.3 million people look there's only so many things you can do unless um you know you have natural riches which we don't <laughs> or if you somehow you know um if you still want to grow, you basically have to figure out how to do it smart and as efficient as you can. And obviously, productivity, digital is a tool for that. So that sort of in the backdrop of uh, an economic crisis of, of late 90s led us to start experimenting with digital tools only when Internet was going mainstream in the first place back then, you know, the dot-com bubble and everything. And these experiments worked. We were able to deliver better services at the front line. We got more uh, efficient in the back office of government. So that got the ball rolling. And um, we have cemented it with a few things. I mean, so, for example, we've we built up good platforms uh, like National Digital Identity, 
uh, data exchange platform we call XROAD and so forth that actually has made it faster and sec more secure to go online in government and beyond. Um, that's quite a bit we've done to um, basically, you know, bring this to all spheres of, of government and life. So a lot of the work we do, from, for example, from my office, is coordination. So the way that we built up the sort of machinery of government for digital, I think that's been part of it. And the third thing that I would point out just here, I mean, we've had enormous luck. Again, I have to say that willingness to experiment. We've had enormous luck with, uh, with leadership who's been pushing us, or at least sort of saying that, hey, let's try it out. So, for example, 20, 2005, when we started with online voting, so you can vote with a, with a secure digital ID from wherever you are in the world. For the parliament here, for example, uh, nobody had tried it. And uh, the mindset was, but hey, let's see how to make it work, even if nobody has tried it before. When we went live with e-residency, which I think we'll, we'll talk about in a bit, um, same thing. Even if there might be some risks involved, even if it's new to the world, let's see how to make it work. So this willingness to just do it and try it uh, has been really important. And there's many businesses at the moment that are struggling with their digital transformation efforts, and you've managed to achieve it as a nation, which is fantastic. But just to help listeners understand the scale of what we're talking about here and how everything from online banking to e-school and digital prescriptions and almost every daily task is carried out digi digitally, isn't it? So can you expand on that and what you've achieved? Well, we still do lots of physical stuff too. So, so for example, yes, I mean, some things we can't get still rid of. So if I look back to the corona crisis and we just emerged from a special conditions, right, then, uh, for example, yeah, we had to stop driving tests because, you know, you still had to be physically in a car for that, for example. But you're right. I mean, all the, let's put it this way, all the routine interactions that you otherwise have in your life and, and transacting you do with the government or with businesses, their digital option exists for that. So if it is, let's take from government perspective, uh, because that's my main field too, then think about it this way. Anything you need to do with a government of yours, that's a digital option. And for that, you can do it online yourself. The only few times where you have to show up somewhere are a few things like getting married. So, you know, still have to be there for that for the time being. Uh, and that's because we just want to make sure you know what you really are doing. So, you know, because of the legal consequences of it. So, um, Anything else, any application to the government, I mean, any contract you want to have between business partners or, you know, with the employer or employee, uh, that you can handle digitally. And it's been built on um, a few things. And fundamentally, yeah, there's a secure digital ID and digital signatures that go along with it. That has made it so much possible. So, yeah, um, not everyone uses it. I have to say this as well. We still have about 10% of people not online, for example. But, you know. 96% of tax declarations happen online uh, with a few clicks only. Almost all uh, medical prescriptions are digital only. I mean, so area by area, we try to really get, make it this way that you can get things done digitally because it saves you time and makes your life better and efficient. And I am passionate about sharing tech startup scenes and communities from all over the world on this Daily Tech Podcast. And one of the reasons I was excited to get you on today is I recently learned that there are 7.4 startups per 10,000 inhabitants in Estonia. So can you tell me more about that startup scene in Estonia and how it boasts this highest number of unicorns in Europe too? Well, there's a few things there. Well, first of all, it's... Um uh, the same thing I said before, we had the luck of having sort of academic and research and science excellence from the past. And that really got the first companies going, like, you know, the founders of Skype came from that very strong academic tradition and, and otherwise. Um, but secondly, it's a, um, it's a very clear function or result of uh, our small market as well. If you have this technical capability in a market of 1.3 million people, there's only so much you can offer them. So basically, you're forced to go global. You're forced to go out. You're forced to think about business models and scaling internationally, if not globally, right? And so um, that has really led, you know, that to this from Skype onwards to uh, to many companies like that going out and the unicorns, you know, sort of following in that tradition. Um, but the third thing I would have to say is also that um, we've been trying to, of course, uh, be open for talent and the rotation of talent. And so whether it's trying to sort of exactly attract um, the next talented girls and boys here to build the next startup of their, their own, like we do with Startup Visa, or to basically work for some of the awesome unicorns here, like we do with Work in Estonia program. So that's also a very important part of the model. I mean, um, we have way more ideas, way more cool startups, way more things to do with our government here than we have people to do it with. So we have to be open. 
And I have been reading about the big startup scene in Tel Aviv recently, but uh, and I think they call themselves the Startup Nation. But I believe that it's Estonia that now has more startups per person than Silicon Valley. Is, is that stat right? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> and the reason is that I mean, there's so many debate about how do you count a startup and whatnot. I mean, I myself like to think about it this way. There are several great startup hubs in the world that, and that are you know very well connected as well. And Estonia is definitely one of them. Fantastic. So can you tell me a little bit more about how anyone can be an e-resident in Estonia and what benefits the global community can unlock by signing up? Because I've seen you guys getting a lot of press about this at the moment. It sounds like an exciting opportunity, but can can you just expand on that? Sure. So um, e-residency is essentially means that we opened up our digital services to the whole wide world. Um, what we started about five years back or a bit more back is to say that, look, we, we realized we had built up all these services for entrepreneurs and for citizens here, but why not open it up more widely? Why not, for example, encourage people from UK or wherever they might be in the world to also then um, set up a company through Estonia and you know reside wherever they want to be and still running from a distance? Again, services are there. And identity, digital ID is the key for that. So e resident essentially means that you can apply and get Estonian national digital ID and through that then, uh, for example, establish a company, run it from a distance, sign deals, um, get your finances done and so forth. So everything involved in that. And we are seeing now whether to expand it into new areas as well, you know, whether some sort of insurance, health insurance might be in the game or whether we could actually provide some medical services or some other sort of other areas of services for you. Right now, it's mostly still for entrepreneurs. So those guys who come from outside European Union, for example, and want to do legit business here, um, whether they sell something through e-commerce or whether they provide as a freelancer their services professionally. So having our you know, ID as an e-resident, you're more trusted in the whole single market, essentially. And Or the other very strong use case is that if you're, like I said, the you want to roam the world. You're a like global nomad, for example, and you, you know, stop in multiple places. You do your business with a laptop for, from the beach, wherever you are. Again, this gives you the entity to get all the business transactions and things done without having any middlemen. And you know, basically what e-residence is about, it's a key to our ease of easy business environment. And what kind of uh, response have you had from the global community here? Has it been a successful uh, campaign? It's way more than we initially expected, I have to say, having been there at the very founding of, of the program. Um, because initially we thought that we would attract mostly folks who already had some affiliation to Estonia. And from day one, basically, the interest went uh, went through the roof in that sense that uh, you know, people who just hadn't heard about Estonia before, but they needed this as a product. They needed this exactly this key and this f- freedom to, to uh, roam the world and run the business still. So... Um, let me put it this way. I mean, the numbers are small, globally speaking, perhaps. Like, we have now more than 10,000 new companies through e-residency. Uh, may not sound much, but, but let me put it this way. Each week, we are getting more new e-residents than there are babies born in the country. So, essentially, and e-residents, you know, they start the companies. They're act- active from day one, which means uh, more revenue for the economy, which means some more taxes for the government. Babies, <laughs> at best, they do it when they're 20 years old, right? So uh, my point being that we are right now growing as an economy faster by incorporating the digital sphere than we do in a physical sort of, you know, population sense. I love how you're creating this almost nation without any geographical borders. And if someone did want to sign up or explore, how long does the whole process take to, let's say, set up a business in Estonia using this e-residency? Yeah, so... um, Essentially, it's this way that you go online. Uh, it's very easy to find. You can just, you know, Google or whatever search engine you use e-residence and you're there. Uh, you fill in an application, provide some sort of background documents and stuff because we check your background. We want to make sure you're legit. Um, and um, once you then can pick up for the e-residency, for the digital ID and the e-residency stuff from our embassy somewhere, then from there on, setting up a business and is easy. Now, the whole process of background checks and picking it up used to take about you know one to two months. It's been a bit slowed, I'm afraid, because of the whole corona thing around the world, just because you know the travel restrictions and otherwise. But it's getting back better again, so we are hopeful. And yes, once you are a new resident, there's nothing stopping you because literally you just need internet and uh, and your ID, and you're good with that. Setting up a company, it's basically a matter of day, if not if not less. 
And I also recently read in, in Estonia that 99% of bank transfers are now made electronically, either on a mobile phone or a computer. So I, I know there's a big deal in scan, across Scandinavia at the moment with this cashless world that we're heading towards, but have citizens largely embraced a cashless world in Estonia? Largely, indeed. And I mean, the, it, the, the stats you're quoting, I mean, it's been like that for, for 10 or more years now. And what really... Um, made us go in that sense digitally in the banking and, and financial transactions was um, very early onset and use of online banking. So essentially, look, when we when we restarted our whole economy and country in the 90s, we went online banking right away. We've never had checks, for example. We don't understand the concept of that. Um, so my point being that, that that, so first through the online and internet version, and of course, more recently through mobile options for payments and other stuff, uh, that that's how it's grown, and it's just because it's so much more convenient. And obviously, credit cards are uh, the, the third thing that started us off with, um, because um, yeah, Estonians like to we don't like to waste time, and obviously, doing banking and even payment in the shop as fast as we can, awesome. And this is going to be a, a fairly big question, so I apologise in advance. But a question I've got to ask is: What is the secret sauce behind how a, the capital city of Tallinn, for example, has become this hotbed for expats and entrepreneurs, and a nation that has largely embraced technology and digital adoption? Because I know there's businesses that struggle with that, but the fact you've done it as an entire nation is inspirational. But but what is the secret sauce there? It's hard to say the secret sauce, but I think it's, um, in a way, I repeat uh, a few bits I've, I've hinted before, but uh, it's been a clear drive, um, not just only government, but also from economic side, because that's the way you can bunch beyond the weight as a startup, uh, as a country, as a government, so forth, in the big bad world, so to speak. <laughs> Secondly, um, there's been quite a bit of effort to put good technological solutions in place. I mentioned, you know, digital ID, the importance of that, and several platforms we use in the government and the stuff we do uh, daily to defend it all as well, for example, in cybersecurity-wise. Um, and the third thing, but but has been, in the end, the way that I see it, and when we speak about Thailand as a city as well, it's about this momentum. Once you get the virtual circle going, I mean, you're in a sweet spot. You just have to make sure you don't break it, right? Absolutely. Well, I've absolutely loved hearing about this today and your story and the great work that you're doing. But for anyone listening that would like to find out more information about the work that you're doing about e-residency, can you point them in the best direction of finding you online and also contacting your team if anyone's got any additional questions after listening to our conversation today? Yeah, sure. No, we are very easy to find online. Uh, essentially, yeah, as you already have grasped from this interview, then you know we all Estonians are more or less online anyway. But yeah, just even, you know, find me by my name uh, from any social network, uh, Sikut, and or if you want to just learn more, there's um, great stuff to be had, uh, to, to be read, whether it's uh, eestonia.com, whether it's workingestonia.com and so forth. So we especially would love, of course, if you want to come help us out with some of the cool stuff that's happening here. Well, I absolutely love how as a government, as a nation, you've built this momentum. And as a result, as a, you've all embraced technology and digital adoption right across the nation. I, I find it incredibly inspirational. And I think so many businesses and governments around the world could learn so much from what you're doing here. But more than anything, just a big thank you for taking the time to come on and share your country's story. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. So a big thank you to Seem for coming on and chatting about the rapidly growing tech scene there in Estonia and how the government supports it. And also for sharing his secret source of, of how the capital city of Tallinn has become a hotbed for expats and entrepreneurs. And before today's chat, my love of Estonia must, was down to Mark Poom, who used to play for my team Derby County many years ago when they was in the Premiership. But it's now very high on my list of countries to visit and I'm going to try and get one of Estonia's tech unicorn founders onto this podcast in the next few months too. And if there is anybody out there that has taken their business to Estonia and made the most of the opportunity of becoming an e-resident in the country, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're from Estonia, or if you'd like me to put your town, your city, or your country on the map too, let me know. Simply email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. And you can find me on any social channel. Just look for me at Neil C. Hughes. But like I say, on every episode, don't just follow me. Send a little note so that I know that you're a 
listener of the podcast too. I must admit, I am excited to visit Estonians and have the ability to visualise so much of what we've talked about today. So watch this space on that one. But tomorrow, I'll have another guest with you and we'll talk about a completely different topic and how technology is transforming our lives, our business, or indeed our world. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.